Tawakkul ala Allah. I lay my trust in Allah. Where was I 20 years ago? Where am I today? Where was I 30 years ago? Where am I today? Wallahi, I am in a better position than I was before. I thank Allah. So if you look at the big picture, you are always winning and gaining. When you came into this world, what did you have? You had nothing. You didn't even have clothes. You were crying. You didn't even know how to speak. You didn't know how to walk. Nothing. And then Allah taught you and slowly but surely he gave you today whatever you have. Did you come to the world with it? Look at your clothes. Look at your things. Look at your watch, your phone. Did you come? Were you born with this? No. Which means you already have more than what you came with. Do you understand what I'm saying? You have more. If Allah takes it away and took it away for as long as he is happy with you and you have a good relation with him, no problem. We are okay. Tomorrow we will start again. Tonight we will start again. Bismillah. And we will build again for Allah. Because Allah will give us. That is yaqeen. Conviction. Look at how our people, sometimes they suffer, right? Everything is going okay. One day there is a big problem. I lost my things. Don't be depressed. Turn back to Allah. Few years ago I didn't have. Then I had. Now today I don't have. I'm going to build again. And I will start again. No problem. Alhamdulillah. Thank Allah. Look after your family. Look after your deen. Be convinced. Allah. وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَتَوَكَّلُوا إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ If you are true believers, if you are true believers, lay your trust in Allah. True believers, what do they do? Tawakkul عَلَى Allah. I lay my trust in Allah. Allah will look after me. Allah will take care of me. Allah will provide for me. Did you eat this morning? The answer is yes. Are you going to eat before tonight? The answer is yes. Imagine. How many people are there here? Thousands. How many in the country? Millions. How many in the world? Billions. Every single one has to eat. Did you think of that? Every single one has to eat. Let's not stop there. That is only human beings, billions, right? What about the animals? How many animals are there on earth? Wallahi, there are trillions and quadrillions and more animals. Every day, they have to eat. وَمَا مِن دَابَّةٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ إِلَّا عَلَى اللَّهِ رِزْقُهَا وَيَعْلَمُ مُسْتَقَرَّهَا وَمُسْتَوْدَعَهَا كُلٌّ فِي كِتَابٍ مُبِينٌ Allah is telling you, there is nothing that moves on earth except Allah has taken it upon himself to provide for those things. And Allah knows when it comes, when it goes, when it is born, when it is going to die, where, where it lives and where it goes out. Allah knows absolutely everything. Everything is written in a book. Allah has written it. Allah knows. So for Allah, it's a small thing to give you a plate of food today, which tastes very nice. For Allah, is it big or small? It is minor. He has given billions of people food today. Do you think he's going to miss you? He will not miss you. Thank Allah. What is the solution? Build your relation with Allah. Allah is the owner of the door of sustenance. Don't knock the wrong door. Knock the right door. Which door must you knock? Knock the door of Allah. He will give you. Who owns everything? Allah. Why should we knock another door besides Allah? Allahumma kfini bi halalika an haramika wa ghnini bi fadlika amman siwak. O Allah, grant me sufficiency in halal so I do not do haram. And I am protected from haram. And O Allah, you sustain me in a way that I don't depend on anyone besides you. You are the one. I will only knock your door, no one else's door. And I will work hard and I will try and I will go through your help. I will do the right things. Knock the door of Allah. Imagine Allah owns entire creation. How can I knock the door of someone else who doesn't even own anything? He owns nothing. How can I knock that door? How? 
Subhanallah, knock the door of Allah. How can you expect sustenance when you are not in the masjid? How can you expect goodness when you don't have a connection with the owner of goodness? So build yourself. Build the connection with Allah. Salah, Quran, dhikr, ibadah, only for Allah. And I will do it every day. Cleanse yourself. You and I are human beings. We make mistakes. We falter. Tawba every day. Kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yastaghfirullah mi'ata marra. In what duration in a day? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to seek the forgiveness of Allah 100 times. How many times do you seek forgiveness a day? So develop this beautiful relation with Allah. And Allah will give you, Allah will grant you, Allah will provide for you. The conviction is so beautiful that when something goes wrong, you tell yourself, for me, it is wrong. For Allah, it is right. For Allah, it is right. Say, for example, one day you lose something in your business. You lose a family member. Someone passes away. For you, as a human being, it is a loss. For Allah, what is it? Is it a loss? No, no ways. For Allah, it is destiny. He planned it for you. Ajabal li amril mu'min fa inna amrahu kullahu lahu khair. Amazing are the affairs of a true believer. Because everything that happens to a believer is only good for him. If something positive happens, he does shukr, he thanks Allah, it's good. Something negative happens, he bears patience, it's good. Reward for sabr is great. Did you do sabr yet? Have you done sabr? Someone will say, yes, I did sabr. What happened to you? So different answers from different people. One guy will say, yesterday one mosquito bit me here on my finger. I did a lot of sabr. That was sabr for him. Another guy says, yesterday I tripped and I got hurt on my knee. Sabr. Another guy says, I lost my child. Sabr. Another guy says, I lost my family. Sabr. Sabr. You see the higher level. Another guy says, I lost my whole business. Sabr. There are different levels. Fasbir. Sabran jameela. Allahu Akbar. Allah is telling Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, bear beautiful patience. Allah. This world is temporary. Temporary. How many days remaining here? Few. In one year, how many days are they? 365 according to Gregorian, 355 according to Luna, right? Let's say 365. 10 years, how many days? 3,650, right? If you, 20, say 20 years, how many days? 7 and something, right? 7.2, 7,200. So 20 something years, 25 years left for your life. That's not more than 10,000 days. Start counting your days, they are finishing. For 10,000 days in this world, I must already make big, big stress. And I must already, do you understand what I'm saying? The days are numbered. My brother, count your days. How many days? 10,000. Start to tick. Maybe before 10,000, you are already gone. Allahu Akbar. And if you are going to stay after 10,000, you will have to retire. Because new young blood will come up and say, please move. Step on the side. Let me do the business. What about me? You just relax. I'll give you something. You are lucky. You have someone looking after you. May Allah grant us goodness. Few years in this world, few days in this world. Don't stress. If today is wrong, tomorrow will be right. And if today is right, something might go wrong according to you tomorrow. According to Allah, it did not go wrong. It was His plan for you and for me. One of the things that Allah has kept for Himself, knowledge, only Allah knows what is going to happen tomorrow. What are you going to earn? What is going to happen to you and to me tomorrow? Meaning in the future. Who knows it? Wallahi, wallahi. Only Allah knows. Only Allah knows. You can plan. Allah can let the plan go ahead. But you can plan. Allah can change the plan. You can think. Allah knows. And He is the only one who knows what will happen tomorrow. So develop your relation with Allah. Plan good things. When you plan to do your salah, Allah will reward you with the intention in namal a'malu bin niyat. Allah. Allah Almighty is in charge. He is in control. 
Why am I saying this? Because in the world today, we are going through very difficult time. Anywhere you go in the world, anywhere you go, anywhere you go, they have different types of challenges. Some worse than others. You talk to me about this place. Today we are in this beautiful masjid, mashallah, in Cape Town. I promise you, my brothers, my sisters, the problems we have and the challenges we face, some people think when they are far away, oh, these guys, they don't have any problems. Everything is there, right? They are very rich. They are very happy. They are very healthy. And they forgot about us. That's what they think, right? But it's not true. You have your own challenges, right or wrong. Today is like this, tomorrow is like that. Today someone steals, tomorrow someone pinches. The next day someone is murdered. The following day we have another new problem with immigration or whatever else it may be. All sorts of problems. No one knows your problems. And you sometimes don't know their problems. Everyone has tests. Don't worry. If Allah put you in a position, thank Him. Alhamdulillah ala kulli hal. Alhamdulillah. Oh Allah, I'm going to try my best. I'm going to do my best. And pray for the others. Reach out to them. Part of Islam is to give. How many pillars in Islam? Five. One is the declaration of faith, shahada. After that, there are four. One of them is to give. Subhanallah, subhanallah. One of the pillars of Islam is to give. Tonight I have a function with Africa Muslims Agency. And the idea is to speak about giving, charities, donation. Wallahi, it is a pillar of Islam. The minute you have something in your pocket, it is part of Islam, a pillar of Islam. Take out something and give. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. You think about it? Part of your Islam is to think about poor people and others who don't have. It's part of your Islam. So we ask Allah Almighty to bless us, to give us barakah, to give us sustenance, to give us goodness. I want to end off with one point. And that is my brothers, my sisters. You have in your midst ulama. You have in your midst your sheikhs and your imams. Please develop a good relation with them and respect them and learn from them. Al ulama waratha Any community that does not respect the ulama, they are destroyed. Even if they are rich, they are destroyed. There is no future for them. It's finished. Did you hear what I said? You have your ulama, you have your mashayikh, you have your elders in community and society, the knowledgeable. Make a relation with them, respect them, sit with them, listen to their lessons, talk to them, learn from them, follow what they have to say, take guidance from them. Those are the leaders, they will help you to get closer to Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Any community, that has ridiculed its ulama, they are destroyed. Even if they think they are growing. They are far from Allah. So that is the piece of advice I want to give you to say, build your relation with the scholars, with the ulama, and all of us should increase our knowledge and teach one another whatever goodness we know. Because we are all brothers and sisters in faith, in the deen of Allah. If I go today, I must be able to leave things for the other generations or for the next generations to take. May Allah Almighty bless every one of us and may Allah grant us goodness. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Thank you so much for listening to this short message. I pray that it has increased you in a little bit of motivation and hope and the same applies to all of us. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.